Yeah, I guess I've never have. Uh, so this is the benefit of systematic problem solving strategy is that it's a versatile. So as I was saying, um, the situation like this, where I'm applying a force that has some angle relative to the surface, I don't think I've ever seen a question like that before. And I've, I've never done it on recording before. Now, in terms of applying the standard strategy, the fact that you have never seen this exact situation before, it's not relevant. Uh, whereas if you are looking for the right formula, then then yeah, that's problematic because you, you will not see the right formula in any of the textbook sections or any of the other. So again, this is the strength of the systematic problem solving approach. It allows you to solve new situations um, without needing anyone else's help, ideally. So, so okay, uh, let me just, uh, I guess it has things labeled already. Um, yeah, M given, F given, okay. Um, let me label the angles um, for um, purpose of uh, correct, good problem solving hygiene. Let me label these angles as a theta and phi, even though they are numerically equal in this particular case, you know, uh, they, there's no, nothing that, um, well, actually, if I'm applying the force horizontally, then then they do have to be the same angle. Okay, so let me actually label them both theta then. Because um, it, it's one thing if the angle was just any random angle, but once they say you are applying the force horizontally, then these are, you know, parallel lines. So uh, you have some, uh, there are one of the theorems in geometry that says that these two angles should be the same. So, so let me use the same symbol for both of them. Um, what is the magnitude of the acceleration of the block? So our standard strategy is, is again, the four steps. We draw the free body diagram. And we are going to look at our free body diagram, what the direction of acceleration is, and choose our coordinate axis along the direction of acceleration, if we can. And then we will break down forces into components. And only when we have done all that, then we will have enough information that we can write down Newton's second law um, as a set of equations. And as you can see here, uh, net force is equal to mass times acceleration. This Newton's second law is what will give you the acceleration. Now, uh, again, the impulse of a beginner might be to jump to this last step because that's where you see what the question is asking for. But you can't do that. Um, just uh, looking at it, um, no one is ready to just jump to step number four. You have to go through the each of the steps. So let me start out with the step number one, which is where we draw the free body diagram. So, um, so I need a, a diagram of forces on block M. We have a gravity pulling it down, mg. And um, I'm oh, and we have the applied force, F. So let me draw that so that I don't forget it. Uh, if a problem tells you there's a force on something, then there's a force on that thing. <laughs> OK, and now having drawn this, um, these two forces will add up to acceleration like this. And I hope you have enough intuition to see that that's not right. Um, one question says, move it up on incline. So assuming that's all correct, the acceleration should be up the incline. And even if the question was mistaken, maybe this force is not large enough, then the acceleration would be down the incline. So, so you need another force that would allow you to somehow have things arranged so that your net force points along the incline. Okay, this is my incline. Um, and oh, and what you have, what we haven't accounted for yet, is this the surface of contact? Every surface of contact, there should be normal force and possibly friction. They do say frictionless, so no friction. You need a normal force. Draw that normal force perpendicular to the surface. And once you have these three forces, 
they can basically be whatever ratio of magnitudes they need to be so that acceleration goes in whatever direction. And so this is a now possible and plausible direction of acceleration. So, so at this step, I do say, hmm, I think it looks like I accounted for all the forces. I account for gravity. I accounted for any force specified by the problem. I accounted for all the put, uh, possible contact forces. So, so I think that's uh, correct. Now, uh, step number two, we need to define our coordinate axis. Uh, so let me uh, let the direction of acceleration be my positive x-axis. So that means my x is actually going to point in this way. doesn't have to, but if you make the axis point in the other way, then you're going to have some uh, extraneous minus signs you have to deal with. This uh, choice minimizes potential chances of sign error. So with that x direction, this is going to be my y direction. Um, yeah, I think that's my coordinate axis. Now we need to break down our forces into components. And this is where you see um, our order of priority. Uh, if our goal was to minimize the forces that we need to break down, we wouldn't have chosen these set of axes. We would have chosen the straight axis. But that's not our first priority. Our, our first priority is to be parallel to the direction of acceleration. So we're just going to swallow having to break down two distinct forces. We'll have to uh, break down the gravity into y and x components. And we are going to have to break down the applied force into x and y components. There's something we are going to have to do. Uh, there's no <laughs> way around it. Um, so you should go through the geometry exercise in the interest of time. Let me just uh, um, do that quickly. So going through the geometry exercise, uh, relating how, um, figuring out how this data is related to all the other stuff. So this data is going to be this data here. So I think, so the, the X component of apply the force will be F cosine theta. Oh, I guess that's what people are sometimes trained into saying half the time that is right. Um, and the y component should be f sine theta since it's opposite to the angle. And figuring out the angle for the right triangle involving gravity is a bit more tricky, requires more care. Um, so I guess doing it quickly. This is 90 degrees minus theta. So this angle here should be theta because it's uh, 90 degrees minus the 90 degrees minus theta. So uh, so once you go through that angle exercise, then you figure out, okay, this is the opposite side. So this is mg sine theta and note that's the x component and the y component is going to be mg cosine theta. So here you have in one problem, um, the association of a sine and cosine with x and y are opposite for two different forces. That's why we keep recommending you really have to go through this geometry exercise each time. You can't just guess, you can't just be, you can't just have a rule of thumb or whatever. Okay, that's step number three. I think we are almost done. Uh, or we are almost done with the standard strategy, which will hopefully leave us in a place where we can answer the question, actual question quickly. So step number four, we need our Newton's second law equations. Net force is equal to mass times acceleration, and we need to separate equations for each direction. Net force in the x direction. So looking at my diagram, I have um, apply the force or component of apply the force, F cosine theta. Uh, and I have component of gravity minus mg sine theta is equal to mass times acceleration. And when I write my equation this way, this uh, includes my assumption that acceleration is pointed this way. Somehow, after I go through all the solutions, if uh, acceleration turns out to be negative, what that tells me is that the actual acceleration is the other way. And th that's one of the reasons I like to put my directions into my equation because it uh, makes it easier for me to spot when I made a wrong assumption. That's easy to correct, but still, you know, you, you should know when your assumptions are not being obeyed. 
So, and I need the net force in the y direction. That's a uh, uh, normal force minus mg cosine theta. And, oh, and there's the applied force still. Okay, let me slow down. Normal force, that's the y, uh, force in the y, positive y direction. I have two forces with the negative y component, f sine theta. So minus f sine theta. And then I have minus mg cosine theta is equal to zero. This is how we picked our coordinate axis. So at this point, you should hopefully have the same number of equations as your unknowns. You have one, two equations. Let's see how many unknowns we have. We are given f, so it's not unknown this time. Theta is given, uh, mass is given, um, uh, acceleration, I'm not given, I need that one unknown and of uh, normal force i also don't know uh, so we have the same situation as previous problem again this is the mark of uh, the easier questions which is that um these two equations are not um they are independent or not sorry independent is the wrong word to use here they are not um either related to each other um in a more difficult question for example if we had a friction in this question um this equation might have a term involving normal force then we can if that's the case then we can't do what i'm gonna do now what i'm gonna do now is i'm going to say oh i can just ignore the second equation because it involves the normal force and just the normal force and i don't care about normal force so i don't have to worry about equation two um, i can just solve for acceleration in equation one and that ought to be right um, and and again, because you can't do this in necessarily every question, particularly with the more difficult questions like those that involve friction, you won't be able to do that. So as a matter of standard strategy steps, I do write down all these equations, even, uh, even though in some of the cases later, we can ignore some of them. So, okay, uh, I think I can just solve it for acceleration. Acceleration is F cosine theta, all known quantities divided by m minus um, g sine theta. And this answer, I can imagine someone getting at it intuitively, because um, if you weren't applying a force, this would be sliding downward the g sine theta of acceleration. And so you kind of figure, okay, some projection of force. And so there's some clever way to intuit this, but the downside of those clever uh, tricks and shortcuts is that they're specific to this setup and um, whatever lessons you learn with those tricks it's hard to apply in a very different situation with the standard strategy you didn't see me change, sing, change a single step because again the benefit of a systematic problem solving approach is that it's a versatile one single approach will you can apply that for many different situations so, um, so let me plug in the numbers here since we did get a question. Um, uh, 45 times uh, cosine of theta, 30 degrees, uh, cosine, okay, 45 times cosine, okay. Divided by the mass, uh, 6.4 minus, and my calculator does take care of the order of operations. That's the only reason I'm doing this. Um, G, 9.8 times a sine of 30 degrees. Okay, that looks right. Say equals uh, 1.189, so 1.19 meter per second squared. Let's see. Yeah, that's it.